Yeah, how many of you are in the mood for a little bit of a curveball this morning? Would you be okay with a curveball this morning? Okay. Here's a better question. How many of you enjoy giving a sweet gift to the God of the universe? Okay, good. That's what we're going to do this morning. Um, this is one of my dear friends, Michael Bethany. Uh, he, yeah. Uh, he and I are friends uh, in Dallas. We both served on staff at Gateway for years. And uh, obviously, you've already seen it. Michael is one of the most anointed worship leaders in the body. But what I love most about him, uh, we're twins in this manner. We're both obsessively addicted to the secret place. And we actually, after last night's service, filmed an episode of The Leader's Cut, and that's all we talked about. And we could have just punched each other for literally an hour and 10 minutes the entire time. It just, it's, it's a, an addiction. And here's why. I personally believe that the greatest privilege in all the earth is the privilege of getting to spend alone time with the God of the universe. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that I've never said in a weekend service before. In 11 plus years, I've never done what I'm doing this weekend. Uh, I've tried to the best of my ability for 11 years, whatever God wants to do, Lord, do it. And if you change the script, if you do whatever, do it. But this weekend, this is the first time I've ever done this. And here's what I mean by this. This is the first time Michael and I are doing this together on this soil, and that's a special thing. First, it's special to the Lord because it belongs to Him. But we're, we're like two little boys who are truly addicted to dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty in the secret place. And I said to the Lord this week, God, I want to bring you a gift. Few times do I get to do what I do with someone that I love, like Michael, where when he just sits at the keys, I've told him, if I could take him into the secret place for me, with me, I would never leave it. Because when he sits down, heaven opens up. And I said, Lord, I, I want to bring you a gift this weekend. I want to lead your people in prayer. And I am praying that you would give an anointing for impartation that in this moment today, there would be an impartation of intimacy with God. Michael and I were talking about it after the last service, just we we're kind of both on cloud nine, just getting to do this. And I'm gonna walk you through what we're gonna do. But I said, Michael, I, I want you to, to think about the gift we're giving God this weekend. If 1,200-ish adults are here between all the services, and the service is going about an hour and a half, we are giving God 1,800 hours of intimate fellowship to our God. And for some, 90 minutes alone with the Lord today is as much as they've experienced in the last 12 months. Now, there are two ways to look at that. Whoa. The other way is, what a gift to give. What a gift to give God. God is on the move. And the key to him moving, I believe, is our desire for dwelling. So as I laid it before the Lord, felt like I got his okay. So we're going to pray and worship. Well, Preston, wait a minute. I thought this is the time where we preach. Oh, we are. You are. You are the epistle, not my notes. So I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. And I know for some, this might feel a little bit clunky. It's okay. If, if you are not yet at a place in your walk with the Lord where consistent time alone with him is a thing for you, it's okay. Don't feel any judgment whatsoever. You're gonna feel a bit clunky as we walk through this. But here's what I would say, just keep pushing through. We're gonna give the God of the universe one of the sweetest gifts we've ever given him as a church. We're gonna spend the next 45 minutes of your life alone with him. I want you just to close your eyes and forget anyone else is in this room. I want you in your heart to establish a tent of meeting just like Moses did. 
One of my favorite ways to go in to be alone with the Lord, to start off our time together, is with repentance. Because I've learned when I go in to spend alone time with him, if there's something off between the two of us, if I don't address it first, it's gonna negatively impact the rest of our time together. So I want you just to take a few minutes right now and just take an analysis. Is there anything creating relational distance between you and him? Whatever it is, give it to him and ask for forgiveness. Pursue him by saying, I'm sorry, Lord. stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself It's not what you have required You search much deeper within You look through the way things appear You're looking into my heart So I'm coming back to the heart of Worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. 
when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. It's all about you. One, one of the reasons I love to start off my time alone with the Lord with repentance is it's like Isaiah in Isaiah 6 where he sees God and then he shouts out, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips for I have seen God Almighty, the King of glory. There's something about coming into his presence and saying, you are God and I am not. You are perfect and I am not. Seeing him for who he is. When I took this to the Lord, I felt there were two things that he said he wanted to do among us. And then there was one thing I believe he's asking from us. And here's the first thing. Once I said, Lord, I, I, I want us to give you this gift. And I don't know if you've ever felt this before when you take the Lord a gift and he just immediately responds and he says, well, if this is what we're doing, if you're bringing me a gift, I'm giving you a gift. So what is it that you want? He said, first thing, I want to heal the hurting heart. Scripture is very clear in Psalms and in other places that God is near to the brokenhearted. But he doesn't stop there. He heals the brokenhearted. And so I want to do something. If you're here, in a season of your life where a part of your heart is broken, I want you just to raise your hand. For those of us that didn't, you can put your hands down, that didn't raise our hands, I want to calibrate your heart and your mind. Don't overlook the pain someone has experienced even in the last seven days. In the last service, we had a sweet couple who lost their baby at 36 weeks. And I saw her before and I said, we're gonna get to a moment in the service where I believe the Spirit of God is gonna come and put his gentle hand on our broken hearts. And I said, no matter what happens in that moment, forget about everyone else in the room and you just let God be God. And they just stood for like 15 minutes alone holding each other. And I'm just saying, if you didn't raise your hand, don't overlook the depth of the pain that could be within the person sitting next to you. I want you just to close your eyes. For those of you that, that didn't raise your hand, I want you during this time praying for someone in your life who does have a bit of a broken heart. And pray for the people in this room who raised their hands and said, I am dealing with a broken heart. One of my favorite things that David said to God in a moment of pain, he said, God, you see all my sorrows and you have captured every one of my tears in your bottle. If your heart is broken and I know for some of you who experienced pain a long time ago, you've erected walls to try and keep anyone and everyone out so you never have to experience pain. I'm just telling you what I sense the Lord say he wanted to do in this moment. He'd like to be granted access to that part of your heart to begin doing a healing work. If your heart is broken, just right there between you and the Lord, I want you to begin to communicate. Talk to the Lord. And grant him a measure of access 
to the point of pain and the depth of your heart that you never have before. I believe he's going to do something supernatural. Let's just take seven or eight minutes. Let God be God. Let the healer of broken hearts move among us supernaturally in a way no human ever could. is open to you God bringing my walls of defense down you see me as I stand you can come closer to this place of pain I've held so dearly Lord please come to me I need you to rescue my soul from the inside you see it clearly Though I try to hide it, you see me. So my prayer is to you right now. Before I leave this room, I don't want to be the same again. I don't want to be the same again. I don't want to leave the way I came. I believe right here I can be changed. Stores me just like brand new. You're making me new. My soul new. You make my heart new. To forgive what they did and 
let go of what they said You can give it all back to me in a moment Oh yes you can I don't need revenge I don't need to say a word I don't need to do another thing Just receive, Rafa, you are Jehovah, the God who heals me, Rafa, Rafa, Jehovah. Free me from myself. Free me from it all. If you if you feel comfortable enough, we're gonna take a couple of minutes praying over those who raised their hand and said, "I'm dealing with a broken heart that I want God to heal." If you raise your hand. Would you just stand? And we're gonna pray over you. I want the whole room praying over you. That's why I'm having you stand. My, my man, that's what I'm talking about. Don't let the enemy talk mess to you. It's not weak to stand up and say my heart's broken. It's actually weak to hide it. Stand in boldness. He is Jehovah Rapha. What the enemy says can't be healed is going to be healed. Here's what I need those of you who are seated to, to be mindful of. You have no idea what those who are standing have been through in the last seven days of their lives. You have no idea how far back some of this pain goes. But here's what family does. We lift our brothers and sisters up and we support. So if you're near someone who's standing, I want you just to extend a hand. Put a hand on their shoulder. If you're close to them, you can even stand up and pray over them but I want you to extend, if you're far from somebody, I want you to extend your hands towards someone or someone's, multiple people, and I want us to begin just praying for the next 90 seconds. I just want you to pray the hottest prayer you know to pray. He is not just near to the brokenhearted. Jesus said, I have come to heal the brokenhearted. The Spirit of God is in this room right now. Spirit of the living God, move among us. Bring the healing salve of heaven. I want to pray over every hurting heart. God, I ask you right now, to open up the windows of heaven and pour out upon every hurting heart a measure of the healing oil of heaven that would extend to the deepest parts of their hearts. God, where the enemy has tried to taunt them and say, you're going to hurt from this forever. God, I break and sever every word, curse, and spell spoken over my brothers and sisters. And God, we pray healing right now. Jesus, you heal the brokenhearted. Would you do something no man, woman, child, doctor could ever do? Would you take the broken heart into your hands, mend it, making it whole, and breathe life where the enemies tried to bring death? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look at this. Hey. Let me just say, and I'm not going to draw attention to anyone, but if you struggle with more extended time alone with God, guess what? You've already spent 20 minutes, 20 minutes in prayer. You know what's so great about our God? 
you can go through one of the hardest things you ever thought you'd have to go through in this life. And not only is God present in the valleys of our pain, he sits with us and heals us. We come to church and we just act like everything's okay on the outside and we forget how much pain we can all experience. Our God is our healer. It's just sometimes we hide our hurting hearts. And that's a beautiful thing when we say, God, it feels shattered into a billion pieces. But I know you can heal it. Let's go a little bit further. Second thing I felt the Lord say that he wanted to do is to lighten the heavy load to lift the heavy burdens. Yep. He is here. He has all power in heaven and on earth. And I know for a fact several of you are being crushed beneath heavy weight right now. Isn't it sweet that he stopped everything this weekend and said, oh, I'm going to move. And the key to my moving is my people's dwelling. How many of you would say, presently, right now, I'm up under a very heavy weight that at times feels crippling and is crushing me? Would you just put your hand up? Okay. Let me read you the words of Jesus. Some of my favorite in Scripture, Matthew 11. Verse 28, then Jesus said, Come to me, all, not some, all of you who are weary, worn out, carrying heavy burdens. Let's personalize it. Preston, you put your name in. Don't run away from me when you're carrying these heavy weights. Come to me. And here's what I will do. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. means he doesn't remove the weight he lifts it and gets beneath it with you let me teach you because i'm humble and gentle at heart jesus says and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden i give you is light here's what i've learned in 32 years of walking with jesus anything which is crushing me is simply a weight I'm not allowing Christ to carry with me. So I ask, who among us is presently carrying what feels like a crippling weight from time to time? Who's carrying it? Just put your hand up high. Last service, it was a daughter with a mother in the latter stages of life, losing mental acuity, and at times even forgetting her little girl's name. That's a heavy weight. God isn't taking the weight. Jesus says, I'm gonna carry it with you. You don't have to do it by yourself. So I want you just to close your eyes and I want you just to take the next seven or eight minutes of your life and like a laundry list, every person in the room, I want you to lay at his feet every weight which is crushing you. Call it out by name to him. Every yoke you lay at his feet, he picks up and puts on his shoulders before he sets it back down on yours. This is our God. And you are not by yourself. But you gotta stop acting like it's your job to carry this all by yourself. Call it by name and lay it at his feet. Maybe one of your children. Maybe a job. Maybe an assignment. Maybe your marriage. 
maybe that you're waiting for marriage. Whatever the wait, let's just take some time. He wants to lift the heavy burdens. How foolish would we be if the God of the universe walked in the room and said, let me help you with that, and we said, no, I got it. Let's just take a few minutes and tell him, no, I don't got it. I need you. It's too heavy for me to bear And if I am honest It's too heavy for me to bear You are stronger you are able to carry me through so I'll let you do what only you can do I surrender to your hand to bring me through God I'll let you only you can do you are my father you're strong enough to bring me through carry me Jesus take the weight it wasn't meant for me to carry take this weight I know that you can Carry, take this weight. Wasn't meant for me to carry. I'm not ashamed, not ashamed to let you carry, 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 carry.
carry me out I'm not ashamed to say God I can't do this anymore Tried to make it look easy But it's really crushing Carrying me Jesus Take it from me God With my hands lifted to the sky I surrender to you my life You know what to do. Oh God, I trust in you. Ooh. Ooh. Oh God, I'm trusting you. Trusting you. All right, if you raised your hand and said, I am carrying excruciatingly heavy weight in this season, I want to ask you to stand. And we're going to pray over you. My favorite part is Michael was singing and prophesying when it moved from carry it to carry me. And so let me, let me just say this, because I, I felt it when he started to sing it before the Lord. I, if you're standing, I want to ask you if you feel comfortable, okay? I want you just to close your eyes and I just want you to lift your hands up to the Lord. Someone with their hands raised can't carry heavy weights. So just like a child, you can just say, Daddy, carry me. Now, to those of you in your seat, I want you just to, if you're close, put a hand on their shoulder. I want us to begin. If you're too far away, extend your hands towards them. I want us to blanket our brothers and sisters carrying heavy burdens, carrying heavy weights. It's not theirs to carry. Jesus, would you just sweep in right now and kneel beneath the yoke? This is not too much from you. You can do it seated at the right hand of the Father. You can kneel beneath the yoke in our hearts and carry these heavy weights. Holy Spirit, I pray for a measure of rest for the most anxious of hearts. God, I pray you'd set them free from feeling they have to do this all by themselves. Jesus, may they sense you partnering with them in a new way to carry this. May they hear in their hearts the same words you said to the disciples that day. Let's do this together. We're going to the other side. God, thank you for not being a God who slams burdens on our backs. Thank you for being the God who loves us enough to get beneath the yoke and carry it with us. Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray for a lightness in heart, mind, and body. I pray for a lightness right now. May the yoke lift up inches off of their shoulders as the Son of God gets beneath that yoke and carries it with them in an all new way. I pray everything they've lost trying to carry this would be restored tenfold. And I pray you'd render them speechless and take their breath away as they watch you do what only you could do next. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
35 minutes. Preston, why do the minutes matter? I want you to think about this. Imagine if you had set up with your spouse a date night at their favorite restaurant. You said, we're gonna have some special time together. Just get ready. And I mean, for weeks, they're just walking around the house, just so excited. I can't wait to go to my favorite restaurant with my favorite person. You show up that night, and four minutes into the date, you get up from the table and go, I'm good, enjoyed it, let's do it again. This is what we do with God all the time. He says, Preston, and I prepare a table for you, not just any table, I do it in the presence of your enemies and you're welcome to sit there with me anytime you want. But I want you to know, I sit at that table like that loving spouse saying, I can't wait for you to pull up a seat at this table. And some of my favorite moments are when you throw away the clock. And when in several hours go by and you don't even realize it. Don't feel any condemnation whatsoever over four minutes every fourth day. Just look at it differently. You have a standing invitation with the God of the universe anytime you want. And because of what Jesus did, we don't have to hang our heads low. We can go in boldly to the throne room. This next part is going to be a whole lot of fun. And I kind of have to restrain myself a little bit when I go into times like this in prayer. But I felt the Lord, I, I've been sharing this with you for years, that I sense we're drawing nearer and nearer to a season of the miraculous, of just seeing the waters of the Red Sea part right before us. And part of my job isn't to use flower language or hyperbole, it's to prepare us. And this week, I felt the Lord kind of, with his divine sense of sarcasm, take me back to the book of Exodus and say, Preston, can you even imagine if as Moses lowers his hands on the other side of the Red Sea and the water caves in on the army of Egypt, can you imagine if Moses would have turned around to the people and said, yeah, look at what I just did. And it was a holy moment between us. Because listen, I've tried to take credit for things God has done in my life. And I just sense the Lord say, Preston, what I do next, I want all the glory for. And so I must have a people who refuses to take an ounce of credit for what I do. I want to read to you what Moses and the people of Israel actually did. They didn't take credit for any of it. The waters collapse on the army of Egypt. And here's what they do. They sing a song to the Lord. I'm going to read you 11 verses. Exodus 15, verse 1. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I mean, imagine the sound of the water collapsing on the army. They sing out. I will sing to the Lord. For he has triumphed victoriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God. And I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army, he has hurled into the sea. The finest of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters gushed over them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, smashes the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow those who rise against you. You unleash your blazing fury. It consumes them like straw. At the blast of your breath, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood straight like a wall. In the heart of the sea, the deep waters became hard. 
The enemy boasted God. I will chase them and catch up with them. I will plunder them and consume them. I will flash my sword, my powerful hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders such as these. You raised your right hand and the earth swallowed your enemies. Do you notice a theme in this song? Do you see, Moses doesn't say, me, 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 me. The people of God don't say, we, 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 we. What do they say? It was you. It's always been you. It is you. And it's always going to be because of you. I want to be a part of a family that never tries to take credit for only something God could do. Because when a boy and a little girl stand before their God saying, you and you alone are due all glory and honor. All bets are off. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. I want you to go back in your mind and in your heart all the way back as far as you can remember to the, the good and the great moments in your life, to every minute of success you've ever experienced. And we're going to verbally create a list like the song Moses and the people of Israel sang that day. And the theme of our song won't be all of the stuff. It will be the God who alone did it all. It was him. So just close your eyes and begin out loud. I want you to be a little louder this time. Say loud enough where your enemies can hear the faithful testimony of one of God's beloved. It was you, oh God, who gave us a baby after the doctor said we probably wouldn't be able to have another one. It was you who rescued the prodigal no one thought could be rescued. It was you. Come on, don't take credit for one thing. Now is not the time for that. Give him the glory he alone is due. Your gifts didn't get you that check, he did. Your business isn't a result of your brain. It's because you're one of his beloved. He did that. so
you've ever been is
I want everybody to stand. I want to invite our prayer team to come to the front. I felt as we were giving God all of the glory for every good and perfect gift, knowing exactly where it comes from. It comes from Him. And I need more people. If you lead a group, I need as many people to be praying because there's going to be a pretty decent number of people that come up and it's going to be a powerful wrap up to our time of prayer. As we were giving God all the glory, in each of the services, I felt the Lord say, kind of, if, if you'll let me just be a little silly, it was the vibe I, I felt from the Lord. It was like a, oh, so this is how we're going to play. So I'm going to get all the glory for every good thing. Okay. I'd like to do one more thing then. Here's what I sense the Lord say. Press in there some people who feel they're up against something seemingly impossible. I would like to do some things which seem impossible. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the reason God allows us to walk through seeming impossibilities that are in his heart to pull off, there is one reason that when it happens, there is only one explanation for it, and it is not you, and it is not me, it is God himself. And when he finds a people who say, I don't want any credit, I want you to get all the glory, then we should pray more bold prayers. That prodigal that the therapist said, you just need to let them go. It may be 30 years before they come back. The devil is a liar. And with our God, all things. It's not a hype verse. It's a reality of the kingdom. The God who has all power in heaven and on earth, for him, no thing is impossible. So before you leave, if there's something, if there's something going on in your life, and somebody's saying, oh, that's not possible, before you leave today, after I, I'm going to pray a prayer and dismiss. After I dismiss, if that's you, I want you to come pray with somebody before you leave. Bring your faith, unite it with someone else's, take this petition before the Lord, and declare the reign of our God, not the words of man. Our God reigns. Man's opinion does not. If there's something that seems impossible, bring it before the Lord before you leave, all right? Let me pray a blessing over you. Spirit of the living God, I pray right now for an impartation to every heart in this room. I pray for an impartation of intimacy. Not just time, intimate fellowship with you, oh God. I pray their hearts would begin to burn in new ways. Spirit of the living God, would you invade every part of their lives. God, would you pursue them in ways they've never seen you pursue them before? And I pray their response to your pursuit will be to chase you like never before. And as they do, I pray they'd get lost in time as they practice for a day which is coming, which is beyond time. This is what we will do. We will walk with the one. So God, would you anoint each of them to start practicing now. May heaven open up as they reach out to hold tighter onto your hand and follow you wherever you go. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.